maximization objective with the wealth maximization objective now uh, we discussed the profit maximization objective in detail with the meaning of profit maximization and then we discussed the merits and the merits of profit maximization now the the merits of profit maximization objective or the criticism of profit maximization as an objective give the foundation basically lay the foundation for choosing wealth maximization as the main objective of financial management now profits were criticized on various grounds first and foremost it was that there is no uniform definition or standard definition of the term profit so profit in itself is a vague concept the second uh, reasoning for the uh, flaw in profit as a, the main objective for finance was that it does not consider the timing of benefits that is the inflows which are coming from the project the timings are not given appropriate weightage under the profit because we are seeing only the absolute profit from the investment made and we are not considering what is the timing of the cash inflow third reason was that quality of benefits is also ignored when we take profit maximization to be the main objective and then again it is uh, it many a times lead to malpractices or exploitation of labor it is again social welfare so these were more uh, i would say uh, general comments but in finance what we focus on is that the quality of benefit and the timing of benefits is ignored now these two points are addressed by the r next concept which is wealth maximization so wealth maximization is maximizing the market price per share but the proper definition of wealth maximization is that it is the maximizing of the net present value of any particular course of action maximizing the maximizing the npv npv stands for net present value which is simply speaking the present value of cash inflows minus the present value of cash outflows so if the present value of the cash inflows is greater than the present value of cash outflows you get a positive npv npv of any action taken by the firm if it is positive it is adding to the wealth of the firm now uh, npv itself is a very important concept in this paper we will be covering it practically in quite a detail aur fir ye present value ka kya matlab hota hai ye kaise calculate kari jati hai this we will be doing further in this unit itself we will start with the concept of calculation of present value so for the time being what you need to understand is if the present value of cash inflows will be greater than present value of cash outflows you will get a positive value for npv and these kind of investments are the best for the firm because they lead to a positive contribution to the wealth of the shareholder now if the economic welfare of the uh, 
proprietors of the firm is maximized then it is reflected in the increasing market price of the share okay now uh, the objective of wealth maximization is not only increasing the wealth of the shareholders but also ensuring the security to the lenders now people who have uh, lent money or uh, the debt basically from people or or uh, your institutions banks from which the corporate has taken debt even individuals for that matter so if the wealth of the firm is maximized it is also ensuring security safety of payment of interest as well as principal amount so in that sense it is maximizing not only the shareholders wealth but also providing security to the lenders of the firm now once we have defined the objective of wealth maximization now we move to a critical analysis so the positives with the wealth maximization objective are that it first and foremost is adding to the wealth of the shareholders it is focusing on the long run picture so it's not considering a single cash inflow but it is considering all the benefits and cost associated with the project over its lifetime so in that sense you are not having a short term approach but you are moving with a long term approach it considers the risk the quality of benefits ka jo point tha wo bhi aapka yahan par address hoga aur time value of money ka bhi address hoga then it recognizes the value of regular dividend payments so regular dividend payments basically means that a firm is having a stable dividend policy so that uh, gives a kind of financial security to the investor and that is very well recognized under this objective so not only are you looking at increase in sales earnings of the firm but at the same time you target shareholder wealth maximization and you also give due importance to the dividend payments by the firm so all these points make wealth maximization a very good favorable objective for the firm okay next is what would be then the unfavorable arguments for wealth maximization or your criticism so first and foremost many experts feel that wealth maximization and profit maximization are the same so if you are maximizing the profit of the firm then automatically it will have a positive impact on the wealth of the shareholders okay next point is the ownership management controversy now this is very important in any big organization there might be issues like agency problem has anyone heard about this problem agency problem any idea yes ma'am and yes was answering uh ma'am it's between the principal and the agents uh, where principals are the owners or shareholders of the firm while agents are the workers below them uh, who works for the principal so this uh, problems arises basically due to uh, following reasons like um it's because of asymmetry of information okay so partially madhav you are correct i'll rectify your point further anyone else wants to add anything to the explanation of what agency problem is who's a principal who's an agent okay 
so uh, agent is basically an individual or entity who's representing another person or entity so which means uh, say let's take the simplest example jo sales representative hote hain they are actually acting as agents of the company for which they are making the sales similarly in a company in a corporate shareholders equity shareholders are the real owners and because these equity shareholders cannot participate in the day to day affairs of the company they are represented by the board of directors so here the principal is the equity shareholder whereas the agent is the board of director which is representing them now jo day to day decisions hain jo bhi activities hain firm ki wo to board of directors manage karte hain ab dono parties alag hain to dono ke objectives bhi alag hain owners hamesha chahenge ki maximum wealth create ho unke liye whereas the agents would be happy with an average performance jahan par wo se bas apni salary justify kar paaye wahan tak ki performance mein wo khush ho to is type ke jo differences hote hain this can lead to ownership management control to address this problem now we know there is a problem because we have two separate entities which can clash with each other so over the years this problem has been addressed through the issue of esop what do esop stand for what is an esop stock options employee stock option good so employee stock option plan hota hai basically jo e stock policy hoti hai what uh, the owners uh, basically aim through an e stock is ki jo bhi employees hain organization ke jo loyal employees hain jo purane kaam kar rahe hain they should also be made owners of the firm so which means that old employees are given a kind of perk in their remuneration that after a point of time they get some number of shares of the company so say for example i am talking about uh, tcs tata consultancy services performing very well so one of the top players in the indian it industry so uh, forever adding the wealth to its shareholders so tcs uh, decides that okay the employees who are working with us say for the past three or four years so as a acknowledgement of their loyalty to the firm we will issue esops so esops mein kya hota hai ki jo employees hain jo acha perform kar rahe hain unko shares allot hote hain firm ke jab aapko shares allot hue तो आप क्या कोशिश करोगे क्योंकि अब आपकी भी फाइनेंशियल इंटरेस्ट है फॉर्म में आपकी भी ओनरशिप है फॉर्म में यू विल वर्क विद मोर डेडिकेशन बिकॉज नाउ इट्स नॉट ओनली द शेयर्स ऑफ द कंपनी विच यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन बट यू आर आल्सो इंटरेस्टेड इन योर ओन शेयर होल्डिंग एंड यू वॉन्ट टू मैक्सिमाइज दैल्यू ऑफ दैट शेयर होल्डिंग सो ई स्टॉप आर ऑफर्ड टू avoid conflict between the ownership and management okay i hope this is clear what agency problem is and then how esops address this problem okay so on the whole it is said that wealth maximization as an objective is nothing but it is a successor for the profit maximization objective because without profit wealth cannot be created so this table summarizes both the objectives just have a look at this table if there is any point which is not clear please ask
is there any question please ask and as we proceed on the whole drawbacks of one will become the merits of the alternate objective it is next topic is evolution of finance function so i already gave you an overview that earlier in the initial years financial function or the traditional approach was that we are considered only with getting more and more sources of funds for the organization so raising of funds was the prime objective then post 1940s there was a change seen especially during the transformational state so transactional state wherein we moved from the traditional approach to the modern approach of not only raising funds effectively but also ensuring their efficient utilization so accordingly we move to a very important topic which is financial decisions what kind of decisions or what are the different types of decisions taken by the financial department these uh, decisions actually they make up your complete syllabus because we will be talking about these decisions at length in the coming units so let's start discussing them first and foremost decision is the investment decision so investment is putting in money with the expectation that it will give a good return in the future so you are foregoing your money today to get a return in the future now investment decisions of the firm can be of two types on the basis of the time period involved you can have long term decisions and you can have short term investment decisions now the long term decisions would be decisions which will have an impact for a period more than one year while short term decisions would be limited to a time period of one year so working capital management basically managing the working capital of the firm it is a, a type of investment decision with a maximum duration of one year so working capital we also did in accounts can anyone tell me what working capital is mam current assets minus current liabilities yes so simply current assets minus current liabilities this is the net working capital of a firm why is working capital required to meet the day to day expenses yes ma'am yeah. normal working costs hmm. to meet the day to day expenses ko hum kehte hain ki jo electricity ke expenses hai raw material ke expenses hai salaries wages hai workers ki all these are very necessary expenses only then can we put our business in a workable condition so these short term decisions are taken under working capital management but capital budgeting is related to long term investment decisions so machine purchase karne ka decision aapka capital budgeting ka hai पर उस मशीन के लिए रॉ मटेरियल कहाँ से आएगा इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का बिल पे करना है वो आपका वर्किंग कैपिटल मैनेजमेंट ओके सो दीज टू वुड बी डन इन डिटेल सेकेंड इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन इज फाइनेंसिंग डिसीजन 
so first we decide okay these are the feasible projects for the firm at stage 1 when we are taking the investment decision now after identifying the suitable projects for the firm you now have to narrow down on the sources of funds so you will be taking decision regarding cost of capital so various sources of finance aap dekhoge simple abhi bole to debt or equity ki cost evaluate karoge aur fir aap decide karoge how should your capital structure look like capital structure is the mix of debt and equity so we will see how our capital structure should be organized what percentage of debt should be taken and what percentage of equity should be taken so once we have raised the money invested the money you earn some profit and then you have to make the third decision under financial management which is the dividend decision so how much of the profits earned should be distributed and how much of them should be reinstated by the firm so these are the main financial decisions which a firm takes so this is just the explanation we now come to the time value of money time value of money is that basically money has value time value rupee 1 received today will have more value than rupee 1 received a year later and hence uh, as quickly we receive the money so the more quicker we are in receiving the money the more value we will have in hand the reasons for time preference of money first and foremost there is a risk involved so if i have given you some money maine aapko udhar pe paise diye hain aap jitni jaldi wo paisa mujhe return karoge utna acha hai otherwise there is a risk of insolvency or you running away so to avoid all these things uh, proper risk adjusted measures are followed proper steps are taken एंड सो वो आप इंडिविजुअल लेवल पे ले रहे हो कि आप कुछ को लैटरल रख लेते हो ताकि जिस पर्सन को आपने पैसा दिया है यू शुडेंट रन अवे विद दी मनी बट वॉट यू वुड प्रेफर एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इन स्पाइट ऑफ हैविंग सम को लैटरल वुड बी दैट यू रिसीव दी मनी लैंड एज सुन एज पॉसिबल सेम थिंग applies to companies also they would prefer that the projects in which they have invested should give them bigger returns in the early stages so jo humne yahan par example kara tha project a or project b ka any one with a sense of finance would prefer project b because it is giving higher cash flows in the initial year apart from the risk factor what people prefer is preference for present consumption so ab bhi agar meri kuch se god forbid if there is any medical requirement and i need money for that so aaj mujhe wo paisa chahiye aap ek saal baad wo paisa return karoge so then it wouldn't be of any use for me next is investment opportunity very important very very important actual mein time value ka jo reasoning aati hai usme sabse prime importance ka yahi point hota hai i will explain this with an example so say i have mr a has given 10000 rupees to mr b now if mr b returns this money to date at zero point of time t zero and t one what will be the difference now say the uh, 
rate of return in the economy or rate of interest is 10%. Now, if I get this money today or if A receives this money today, this 10,000 can be invested at 10% for one year. And after one year, this value will increase to 11,000. Whereas if this money is returned only at the end of first year, then we get 10,000. So receiving money early gives you an opportunity of reinvesting it. And reinvesting will add to the original amount which is not the case here. So we prefer to receive the money as soon as possible. So the investment opportunities again are, the, uh, are one of the main reasons behind money having time value. Apart from this, as you people told yesterday, the uh, inflation would also be a reason for time value of money because there again the purchasing power of money falls with an increase in inflation in the economy. So importance of time value of money so cash flows which are occurring over different periods of time can be brought to a standard form through the time value of money so we are doing this practically and for that, we will be using time value of money tables. You need to carry tables from the next class that is on Monday. We will start with the practical from this unit just for uh, your knowledge. I'll also show you the time value of money tables. So, you online mil jayega. Aapko abhi, you people are not having your books, otherwise I'll share this on the classroom also. So, you have four types of tables. Two tables are for calculating present value and two tables are for calculating the future value. Just to give you an idea, this is what a table looks like. You are given the discount or uh, the required rate of return so interest rates hai, percentage rates hai, they are given horizontally so here you are shown from 1% to 10% aapki book mein 25% 20% tak hota hai generally table and then vertically you are given the number of periods so this is not the number of years but this is the number of periods. Obviously, if interest annually pay, then the number of periods will be one hoga, or uh, the number of years will be one. Hoga. But if interest is semi-annual pay, then the number of years is one, but the number of periods is two. So, this is what we need to be very careful in this table is that vertically you are given the number of periods of compounding of interest and not the number of years. So I'll share these uh, tables on your classroom. What I want is that people should say to 